so we'll get started. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this evening for our scholarship panel event. Um, I'm Katie McNerney. I'm one of the financial aid outreach specialists at HESC. Um, HESC is the Higher Education Services Corporation, and we are New York State's Higher Education Student Financial Aid uh, Agency, and we help students pay for college. So tonight we're going to discuss uh, scholarships and when they're available, where you can find them, how to apply, and just breaking down everything you need to know about them. If you have questions throughout the uh, discussion, please put them in our Q&A and our panelists will answer them throughout the presentation. Um, hopefully, otherwise, at the end, we do have uh, time put in for the questions, so we'll be able to answer them then. But please just put them all in the Q&A and we'll go from there. And then also, I just want to let everyone know that after the event, you will receive an email that has just a summary of all this information from tonight's presentation. Um, I, it will be sent to the email that you use to register for this event, but I, it's just going to have a bunch of the links because I know there's going to be tons of information for all of you. Uh, it'll have all the different websites and links uh, in just a Word document for you to have uh, for later on. So I'm joined by a bunch of panelists. I'm so excited because uh, I'm not very, uh, I don't have a lot of information about scholarships myself. So I'm super excited to hear what these people have to say. Um, but I just have so many people that are here with me and I'm gonna let them introduce themselves and where they work and uh, what they do. So uh, Michael, you're the first one that's up on my screen. So I'll let you start it off and then you can just pass it on. Uh, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Uh, my name is Mike Nguyen, and I specialize in working with students who are interested in applying for the Army ROTC scholarship program that covers 100% tuition fees for college for students who are interested in service. Um, so that's me, and I can pass it over uh, to the next person, um, Didi. Thank you, Michael. It's very nice to be here tonight, everybody. Uh, Didi Mozaleski here. I'm with the City College of New York. City College of New York is part of the City University of New York system, and my office, among many other things, handles scholarships, fellowships, and grants for students across a wide spectrum. Um, and we'll talk about that later in terms of different types of scholarships, but I will say we do everything from traditional academic scholarships to things that associate with emergency awards, and I am really looking forward to talking with all of you tonight. And I will kick it over to Stacy. Good evening, everyone. I'm so glad that you all are joining us. My name is Stacy Fani. I work on the counseling team at College Board. Um, so you might know us for our advanced placement classes and the SAT, but you might not know that we also um, have a college and career readiness site and scholarships and a scholarship directory. So that's what I'm here to talk to you about tonight. And so I will pass it on to Susie. I think you're on mute, Susie. Yes. Hi, everyone. I am so excited to be here. I work at Borough of Manhattan Community College, which is part of the City University of New York. Um, we are located right in Manhattan. Um, uh, in the Tribeca area. My job is scholarship. I've been doing this for 15 years and I'm all things scholarship at BMCC. So I've helped countless students get scholarship to go to, you know, prestigious four-year schools. And I am excited to, you know, get here to share some knowledge with you all. Awesome. And then I also have two of my colleagues here, uh, Piper, who is actually my boss. <laughs> um, but then I also um, have Maria here as well. And they're um, just here to join our conversation. So with that, we'll get started. So to start off, obviously, we're what are scholarships? So um, I'm going to let Susie start this one off. Good question. Scholarships, scholarships, scholarships are free money in a nutshell, free money that 
are given to students to cover the cost of college. Um, it can cover um, from your tuition to covering some books, metro cards, food, computer to go to school. So different scholarship tells you what they're going to pay for, right? So if you apply for scholarship and it says it's for school related expenses, that's a broad, right? So that's money that you can use to cover anything going to school. The best thing about scholarship, like I said, is free that you do not have to pay back. Um, scholarship, you can get a scholarship based on a number of things. And I, I have a colleague here who's gonna talk about the different types of scholarship, but primarily this is free money that are given to you based on a specific criteria. So you can get a scholarship based on gender, based on sports that you play, based on academic, based on needs. I always say there's a scholarship for everyone because it's so broad. You just have to look for the one that fits you. Perfect. And with that, I mean, you definitely just went into a bunch of topics that we'll cover. So I'll let Dee Dee answer this one. Sure. And I'm going to say, I see in the chat, there's a question asking if this is specific to freshmen um, and or New York State. And what Susie just said, that is a national definition of scholarships. What I'm about to say is a national definition of scholarships. Um, and I will remind us all, if there is something you love, there is a scholarship out there for that thing. If there's something you do, um, you volunteer, uh, you love to write, um, you have an affinity group that you're a part of, there is a scholarship out there. Um, this is actually the overwhelming part of scholarships. There's so many types out there. Um, you can find scholarships as a first gen student. You can find scholarships as a transfer student. You can find scholarships that associate with military background, including dependents. You can find scholarships for um, your incoming major. You can find scholarships associated with service, with commitment for others, um, public service. Uh, scholarships come in lots of ranges from state dollars to federal dollars to private philanthropy. Um, I said a little bit a while ago when I was introducing myself, we also have emergency awards and a lot of our emergency awards come to with scholarships and they do everything from um, help offset tuition debt to help offset, offset emergency needs around housing. Um, I have students who come to me all the time who are um, going through really challenging times um, in their home life. And we've got scholarships that associate with that to allow them to focus on their education. Um, so I will just remind us the challenging part of scholarships is that there's many more dollars out there than people take advantage of. And there's many more types of affinity groups and affinity scholarships. Um, and I know that becomes overwhelming. And so that means building in time, um, looking at ones that, is, that you know, if you don't wanna write an essay, there are scholarships that don't require an essay. Um, if you love to write, there are scholarships that will require you to do something um, in writing to sort of make the case for why you, but um, start early, um, start often, um, don't make it a one-year thing. Every year that you're in school, you should be looking at every type of scholarship out that associates with your education. So hope that's helpful. Absolutely. I that, that was something that I never did as a high school student. If it required an essay, I just ignored it. And now I wish I didn't do that because my sister did all the scholarships possible and she laughs at me every month when I'm like complaining about what I owe in student loans because she doesn't have that because she did the work for it. So I hear it all the time and it just, uh, just do it. <laughs> like just write say, the essay, like put the effort Now in. you're going to, you're going to out more of us who also chose to not do essays. And, um, <laughs> It is really important, do not be turned, you know, don't be turned back by something saying you've got to write something. Because to be honest, and we'll talk about this later, you're going to be writing things after you get your scholarship. You're going to be writing thank you letters. You're going to be writing a bio on what you did with your money. So don't be afraid of the writing as I was as well. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I saw if it said like 500 characteristics, I was like, oh, that's too, too long. Don't have time. <laughs> and that's not bad. And that's not a lot of effort. <laughs> If I can also just add, um, not Absolutely. necessarily for um, Army scholarships, but just scholarships in general, um, there are so many organizations out there that have a scholarship budget, and they may be chartered and mission and required um, to give those financial awards to students before the end of that fiscal year. And so um, sometimes scholarships are just things that people don't know about. 
And meanwhile, there is someone who's literally their full-time job is to try and hunt and find that applicant to accept this award because they won't have that money available in the next fiscal year. Um, so the other thing I would share too is, again, not always necessarily um, speaking for the Army or for any other scholarship programs specifically, um, but there are times where we had students that have applied for scholarships that did not meet the requirements or the minimum recommended requirements, but because they had applied and because they were in the database in our system, um, when scholarship money later did become available, um, when they later became eligible, they were able to apply and take advantage of, of those awards. So um, I, I just kind of summarize that by saying, remember those organizations uh, want to give scholarships just as much as you probably want a scholarship yourself and don't let requirements alone dictate whether or not you will try because you never know um, what they'll use that for and when you might be eligible later. That was a great transition to this next part. Uh, yeah, so there, I know that there's a ton of different eligibility requirements for scholarships, stuff like that. Stacy, do you wanna get into that? Absolutely. And I think Michael, that was a great segue um, in, terms of, in terms of what's required for scholarships. Uh, there's a, a kind of a joke in the financial aid world where the answer is always, it depends. <laughs> and it's like that with um, scholarships as well. It depends because it, what's required for scholarships um, often is dictated by whoever is giving the scholarship. Um, so it might be that you are required to do an essay for a scholarship. I always um, advise my students, <laughs> Caitlin, <laughs> not to avoid the ones that had essays um, because so many students avoid the ones with essays. So that made your, your chances better. Um, some of them might require a GPA or an SAT. Um, if it's an art-based one, you might have to do a portfolio, for example. Um, but one thing that should not be required, and I do just want to put this warning out there, it should not require you to provide like a credit card um, or anything like that. Those um, I would be very uh, cautious of. If you think it's legitimate and it's asking for a credit card, go ask a trusted adult like your school counselor or a teacher or a parent. But with scholarships, because it's free money, they should not be asking you for money up front. Um, but yeah, that's a challenging question to, to answer because as Dee Dee mentioned, um, it's so broad in terms of what scholarships are out there. There are some really kind of quirky scholarships out there. Like I remember one where um, the requirement was a duct tape prom dress or something like that, right? <laughs> so whoever's giving the money can really set the requirement um, for the scholarships, but sometimes it might require you to have a recommendation um, from a teacher or a counselor or um, an employer. It just, it really does depend. Um, but I encourage you, like Michael said, don't let the requirements deter you. Um, go ahead, do your thorough research um, because I agree with um, everything that everyone has said so far. There's something out there for everyone, um, regardless of what the requirements are. So don't let that sort of um, scare you. There's something out there for you as far as scholarships. I have a random question about that because I know that you know your social security number is a huge, obviously that's a huge personal thing. Are there ever scholarships that ask for information like that? I know that you talked about a credit card, but will they ever right. ask for personal information like that? Or is that a scam? I would say it's a scam if they're asking you that as part of their application process. But um, once you've earned the scholarship, you might be required to because you know the companies have to report um, right. you know the earnings. But as an applicant, uh, no, you should not be providing your social security number only if you've actually won the scholarship and you're going through all the paperwork that that comes right. with getting that money. Gotcha. So 
so we'll talk more about uh, essays. And I know that Susie wanted to um, explain a little bit about this and like what uh, most students should include in them. Yes, the essay, the scary nightmare essay, right? And if I ask, if there's 10 students applying and I ask all of them, nine will say, I'm not gonna apply because I don't have a story. I can't write this. I don't. You guys are doing it every day. When you meet somebody and you introduce yourself to them, my name is, I do this, that's an essay, right? It's, you know, it, it sounds scary, you know, and we all from different places, right? And so sometimes there's, you know, some cultures, you don't brag, right? Because there's a, no, don't brag. But essay and the scholarship part is where you brag because this is where you're showcasing all the accomplishment that you've done, all the things that you have, right? So when you meet somebody and you introduce yourself, hi, my name is, and I go to school here and I do this, that's an essay that you don't realize it, but that's an essay. So you can build up on that. But essay and scholarship are very crucial, right? Because that's how the committee gets to know who you are. Nobody's gonna give you the money if they don't know who you are and how you're gonna use the money and how you can express yourself. Because face it, people that want to give scholarship, they have good intentions of helping the society in general, right? So when I give you the scholarship and you do well and you go to school and you get a job, you um, you are helping society. So how they know this is by your essay because some scholarship, they don't do interview. So they want your essay to come alive, right? I mean, I'm sorry, you want your essay to come alive and they be like, pick me, I'm right here, pick me. And how do you do this? It's your job to persuade them to that you are persistent, that you are the person who's gonna be successful. So I'm, I'm gonna give you some tips in your essay, right? Because the co committee, they wanna know about you. And sometimes you think you don't have a story. Everybody have a story. Don't think, oh, you know, I, I have a student said, oh, I, I mean, I only work part-time and I take care of my little, sister and I go to school full time. That's a story. You know, do, do you know how that important is? Because you are multitasking, you're doing so much. They want to hear that. That's the type, type of person, you know, that's the type of stories they want to contribute to. Because if you get the money, maybe you stop working less, right? And you go to school more. So some tips that I have for you, right? On um to um get your scholarship thing started. Nowadays, we are in the age of internet and um, quick, quick stuff. You all recorded all kinds of stuff. Sometimes you can just record yourself saying, you know, things. You record stuff and put on your social media all the time. You can record your essay and then play it back and then write it down, right? So usually essays, they give a topic, they give a question and you just have to answer the question. Don't some people like, oh, they asked me about this, but I have an essay from way back there. I can use the essay. Don't do that. It's, it's kind of like a resume, right? You, I mean, you have that resume, but for every job, you want to fluff it up a little bit. Look at the job description and, you know, put stuff, stuff in there. That's what essays are, right? So you're talking about yourself, whatever the question they give you. You want to come alive. You want the person who's reading this. I want to meet this person. I want to give the money to the person, right? And how you do this is to be creative. There's so many ways that you could be cre creative in writing your essay. But the most thing is that make sure that your essay is completely connected to who you are and it reflect the best aspect of you. Positive, right? Let's say an essay tell you about write about the challenging things that have happened in your life. Great, write about that. But quickly lead from there to the positive part because they wanted to see how you accept, um, you know, how you go through um, challenging stuff, right? So if you're going to stick to poor me, poor me, poor me, why, why would I want to give you money if all you're seeing is poor me, poor me, right? So you want to write your essay in a positive way you want to show them that you are a can-do person. So I always say your essay has to be present. Use present tense as much as possible, right? You all have the teachers, somebody that you trust that can read it over for you. Please use them. Sit down, brainstorm, have the idea going. Sit with that person. There's writing centers all over. 
sit with that person. Like, this is what I have to write. Have them help you create it. Tell your story. Don't try to tell a story that you think, oh, if I say this, they want to hear it. Because guess what? Your story is so different. That's going to make you stand out, right? So reveal the best aspect of yourself and be truthful. Don't tell lies. I've had students tell lies and you could tell, right? So be who you are. Trust me, we want to meet the person that you are. That's what we want to do. And take your time to prepare your essay. Sit down and think. If you one of those that wait till the last minute to write the essay and send it over, that's not a good idea, right? Because even the best writers, all the books that you read, they have editors, right? They write it, they have to rewrite it, and they have to rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it, make, make sure that it's perfect. And then they give it to the editor to do, right? So that's what you want to do to come, you know, if you want to be a, the best writer and a, a good essay, you can't write it overnight and just ship it over, right? You got to write it, let it sit down, take a break and go back and read it. If you let it sit down, you take a break, you come back, all the things that shouldn't be there because now you're reading it with a fresh pair of eyes, right? So all the stuff that you're reading, for me, I have an issue with the um, um, there and them, so sometimes when I'm writing fast, I will do that. And then when you go back, like, oh no, that's not what I meant to see, say. But if you write it the last minute, you're not gonna have time to edit it. And there are scholarship out there, like the Jack and Cook scholarship that is given $55,000 for high school students to go to college. You can't just write an essay overnight, right? You wanna write your essay, you wanna tell your story, Nowadays, we have all these sorts of, you know, um, the things that you can use to edit your stuff. Please, 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 all the new, um, what do you call it? Um, the chat um, GBT thing, please don't use that. We wanna hear your story because we can tell if it's not your story by how you write it, right? Because we have your whole essay, right? We have your essay. And there's so sometimes there's short essay questions and stuff like that. So when we read that and then we get to the big essay and it's just like, we could tell there's tools that we can use to tell so don't use those things right and you want to express yourself they really like i said the essay is one place that we give you permission to brag about who you are right all the things that you've done um even if you don't think that is significant say it and one of the things i also encourage my students to do if you have some quirkiness right you know you're like oh no you know people say i'm like this write it if you feel comfortable saying it write it, right? Sometimes that's what sets you apart from somebody else, right? And you want your essay to set you apart because it's, after all, a scholarship is a competition, right? So you're competing. And essay, among other things, are uh, one of the things that they look at. So you want your essay to stand out. You want the reader to say, wow, I want to meet this person, right? And, and, and so and so doing that, you want to es, um, express your thought clearly and logically. Don't go on and then, and, and, and you know, don't go on, Re, you know, especially if they give you um, a space, they, they give, let's say, 300 words or 500 words. Those words, you know, they're very short. You think in your head, 500 words, that's a lot. No, it's a paragraph, right? You don't see that, like, that's a big, you know, I, I have to write this. So you wanna make sure that you are using every word, right? And I always say, if you're one of those people that start an essay, my name is Susie Jemphy and I wanna apply for the, right? That, just, just by saying that alone, right? You, that's not creative. You wanna find creative way to begin your essay. You wanna tell a story and that story had to reveal the core quality of, you know, that about you and that story can you know if you have like you know different cultures and stuff like talk about them right the whole point is you want to be different you want your essay to speak for you why if there's especially not an interview space um interview process in that scholarship you want your essay to speak for you and you're not alone you have teachers to help you you have friends to help you so don't be afraid to you know utilize those people use them I'm sure they, I mean, they're so happy. Even going to your local library and asking the people, I'm writing this essay, can you, they will help because they use, they have um, workshops and um, other things like that, resources. And they can even point you to write people or write resources. So don't be afraid to 
write them. But you know, so three things that I want to say, and I'm with the essay, right? The essay, you want your essay to stand out. You want to show who you are. You want to brag. You want to showcase who you are, right? And you want to answer the, exactly the question that they're asking you. Don't use an essay that you have before. Say, well, it's similar. I can use that. It's not. You want to respond to the question because you are giving direction follow the direction and stay positive in the essay, right? Even if it's a, you know, write about something bad that happened to you, stay positive, show them that you are proud of everything that happened to you. And because you went through that things that happened to you, look at who you are now, right? So yeah, that's what I have to say about essays. Sorry, I went on and on. No, thank you so much for that. Definitely a lot of information there. I was taking notes, trust me. I'm thinking about going back to school for my master's, so I'm thinking about all of this. <laughs> can I add one thing to what Susie said? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can tell that she's been doing this a long time because that was like <laughs> wonderful guidance. And I just want to, to add that, you know, what Susie advised you about scholarship essays is the same thing for your college essays. Everything she said about the scholarship essays you should also apply when it's time uh, for you to do your college application. Is now the time to frighten them by saying everything she just said that you reiterated is also how we work every day. Like this is a never ending cycle for us, right? So you're gonna be writing forever. You're gonna be proofing forever and you're always gonna want somebody to, to be your second eyes. Um, so this is a great time to practice, practice, practice and get it right as you tell your story to acquire, you know, scholarship dollars, that's just fund your way through higher ed. But it and is- The different. more you do it, the, the more comfortable you get. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. And can I just add to that? Even if you write that essay, right? And you don't get the scholarship, you have a great essay that you can build on, right? Because I mean, you know, I'm sorry to be a down, but not every scholarship that you apply for that you are going to get, but going through that process, writing the essay, write it wrong. You, I have students come talk to me about, wow, I didn't know that I've you know, have done all of this till I put it on paper, right? So now you have this great thing that you can carry with you. So doing that is a practice. And also it gives you, you know, a way to see everything in a clear, you know, in front of you. I just wanted to add to, especially for scholarships that look for leadership, you know, um, it's important to, one tip I'd give is um, leadership is not just a list of activities that you've done, um, but you want to answer the question of so what? So for example, um, you know, if someone was elected to be vice president of student council, you know, that's great, but you're not really telling us how many people were you responsible for? How often did you meet? Um, on the other hand, if I have a student that let's say worked a part-time fast food job, but they told me that they did it for two years that demonstrates reliability. And they also write about how they showed some, some new employees the ropes. That's the student that's acting in an informal leadership position over two years in a position of reliability. So um, the only other tip I would share is in some cases, there may be some parts of the student's record that aren't the strongest. So if you're able to speak to that point, and like Susie said, you know, um, hardship is compelling storytelling if it also is followed by showing growth. So if you can say, I struggled in chemistry with a C average, but applying myself, meeting with the teachers and realizing this is important, helped me get to a B that demonstrates development of self, personal growth and getting results. So those are my two tips for, for essay writing and also interviews. I'm sorry, I wanna ask something else. <laughs> um, so for the essay, right? Um, based on what he said, right? Um, there is something called show writing and tell writing, right? Sometimes you write an essay and you go, I'm determined. I am a, a um, detail oriented person. What does all that mean, right? You wanna show them and how you show them that you determine, but not even using that word, but you could say, okay, I was trying to get into this class, right? But it was full. And I went to the professor, I stood in front of the class every day and I talked to the professor, telling that, right, shows instead of telling, you know, because those are just words. So in your essays, right, try to show how you did something versus 
you know, using that, you know, the, that, um, what is the word? Using that description, right? You know, I'm determined. Show example of how you are determined instead of saying that word, right? I'm a detail oriented. Show example, like, you know, every time I go to class, I take a note here, but when I come back, I write it in here and I color code everything and I'm doing, that shows that you detail, right? So you want in your essays, you want to show instead of telling that, sorry. No, thank you. Um, I'm going to kick it back to Stacy though, because I do have um, a bunch of slides that she sent me. Um, so I'm going to let her take this one. All right. Thank you. So Just now let me gonna... know when you want me to go through them. Okay. Um, so now we're going to kick it over to where to find scholarships. I'm kind of going to do this in, in two parts. I think, Caitlin, where I want to talk about uh, where they can find scholarships with College Board, but then I also want to talk to them about where to find scholarships outside of College Board. So we can go on to the next slide. Okay, so I mentioned um, at the beginning, you know, that um, Big Future is our college and career uh, site, free, comprehensive, personalized, trusted resource to help you with these three categories that you see on the screen. So it's designed to help you explore careers, help you plan for college, and help you pay for college. So I'm going to, of course, because we're talking about scholarships, focus on the pay for college uh, category. But you see at the bottom there, bigfuture.org, that's the website that you can go to um, to look at all the things I'm going to talk about and talk about the other two categories that I'm not going to talk about tonight. Okay, next slide. All right, so one thing I really love about Big Future is that Big Future has scholarships. And I'm a former school counselor of over 20 years. Um, and I have to say, hands down, this is one of my favorite scholarships. I'm not saying that because I work for, for College Board, but it really is uh, one of my favorites. So I wanna make sure that you all are aware of this particular scholarship which there's no essay, um, there's no GPA requirement, there's no um, SAT requirement, there are no recommendations. It's strictly based on students completing steps towards their um, next move after high school. Um, every month we give away hundreds of $500 scholarships and every month we give away two $40,000 scholarships. That's every single month and it's open to sophomores, juniors, um, and typically seniors. Seniors, their cycle has ended already, so right now it's open for sophomores and juniors. On the slide here, you can see the six things you can do. You don't have to do all of them, um, but if you do, for example, if you start a career list, that means you're saving three careers. If you're growing on Big Future, you see three careers you're interested in, you save them. Um, that earns you an entry for that month's drawing for, for the scholarships. Um, same thing with your college list. You go on Big Future, you're saving um, three colleges to your list. That earns you an entry. Uh, for my juniors, it's a little higher for you. You have to save six. Um, if you're exploring scholarships on our scholarship directory, which I'm going to show you in a moment, save three. That earns you an entry. Um, strengthening your college list is about making sure when it's time for your application season that it's a balanced list. So we want you to not apply to only Ivies or only selective colleges. You have to have a balanced list when you're applying to college. So we want to make sure you have uh, safety, two, re I mean, two match, and three reach schools at least on your list. So when you make your list look like that, on Big Future, that earns you an entry. And then also when you complete the FAFSA and apply to colleges, um, the, that earns you entries. Um, completing the FAFSA, we know there are some students who cannot complete the FAFSA. Um, and so you can still earn an entry for that one just by indicating that you can't complete that step and we don't ask why. Um, so those are the things that will earn you entries for those scholarships. So you can see they're just based on you doing things that your teachers, your parents, your counselors are advising you to do every day to get you ready for that next step after high school. So that's really why it's one of my favorites, uh, favorite scholarships. Next slide. 
Um, so here you see a screenshot of our scholarship um, search tool. So when you go to bigfuture.org and you're looking under um, pay for college, we have a scholarship search tool where you can tell, um, you can put in what you're looking for in a scholarship. So you might want to look for something that's local to your area. You might want to look for a merit-based scholarship based on your GPA or SAT. Um, you might want to base it on, you know, if you're in college or going to college, you're still a high school student. So you put in all this criteria and it will produce a list of scholarships that fit that criteria you're in, um, interested in. And we have over 24,000 scholarships in this directory. So like uh, everyone has said here, there's something out there for everyone. Um, so I recommend this as a great tool. They are vetted. They are trusted scholarships. We're not putting up anything that's a scam. Um, and we have over 24,000 scholarships that you can um, begin um, checking out. So that's our scholarship search tool. Next slide. And that might be the last one. Okay. And so um, that's what we offer at College Board. But there are also other places that you can look for scholarships. Um, I think it was Michael who mentioned, for example, if you work at a fast food restaurant or you have a job, you can check with your employer to see if they offer scholarships, check with your parents' employer. That's what uh, my sister did. <laughs> that's what she did? Yep. Um, I would check your school website um, because especially um, your school websites, they're going to have those local scholarships that you might not see nationally. Check other schools' websites um, as well, because I used to recommend my students to check out School Down the Street because they had a fantastic scholarship site. Like, I swear they must have just had one person who did that, and that was their only job because it was phenomenal. So don't be afraid to dabble into some other schools' website and see what their scholarship page looks like. Um, let's see, I want to make sure I didn't forget anything. Oh. Check for the colleges that you're going to apply to. Look on their financial aid page to see if they have scholarships that you qualify for. And if you've already figured out what major you're interested in, you can also look on that college's, um, that department for that college to see if they have um, specific scholarships for that major as well. Um, and I think it was Dee Dee who mentioned, you know, it's an ongoing, it's a process looking for for scholarships um, and you can start early on like you can start using that scholarship tool as early as if you in ninth grade start using it um, it might not be that you apply until your junior year or your um for for the scholarship but at least you know okay i've already checked out this scholarship it's on my list of of things to apply to so hopefully you all find that helpful thank you so much for that stacy Sure. And just so everybody knows, um, her um, big future um, website and everything like that will go out in the email after the presentation as well and all that information. Um, so I know that the amount of money that people are able to save for scholarships is incredible. And I'm jealous of every single person that has that ability and did that. Um, Susie, I'm going to pass this over to you for your successful scholarship stories. So yes, there are a lot of students that got scholarship, but I'm gonna talk about what makes you a successful scholarship person, student, candidate, whatever you wanna call it, right? Um, you know, we talked about a lot of things that will stand out, right? But grades are important, right? Start working on your grades, grades are important, but sometimes it's all the things that you do on, on campus as well, getting involved, right? sometimes that will have advantage of a grade because yes, you did great, yeah, but then you were on this club, you do this, you volunteer for this. It doesn't even have to be on campus, off campus, go do something, soup kitchen, um, volunteer, do something, right? They want the well-rounded students, right? So if you have all of that stuff with good grades, oh, you are champion, you will get, all, you, you have more, um, you know, you have an advantage and there's more scholarship that you are eligible to apply for, 
right? So they are looking for students that have clear goals, right? You say, I wanna be a doctor, but you never taken any science courses. That shows that, mm, right? Really, is that what you wanna do, right? But you wanna be a pharmacist, right? But then every summer you volunteer at CVS um, pharmacy, you're doing that, that shows, right? You have the clear path. This is what you're going to do this year. So they wanna see the students like that. And if you do those things that make you a scholarship um, person and strong communication, like I said in the essay, that also helped as well. They're looking for students that are resilient. They are persist, regardless what. And trust, I see so many of my students and I'm so proud of them. They come in and I hear their story and I'm like, oh, are you been here, right? They've been through so much, but they're still here. They persist because they want that education. They want to get that degree. They want to see. So those people having that and putting on on your application and showing them all of that, that makes you a successful scholarship person. Like I said, great, you know, having a good grade, that's great. That's good. We want you to do that because that's why you're in school, right? To get good, good grades and do stuff. But also venture around, right? So somebody will say, well, I don't have enough time to volunteer because I work full time, I do this. You don't need to volunteer just for volunteering sake, right? Do something that's aligned with your major, with your field. Sometimes that will give you a taste of, is it really what I want to do, right? Let's say, you know, you want to go into the nursing, but you never done anything. You never volunteered at, at a hospital. Do you really know what nurses really do? Do you have a taste for it? So sometimes volunteering, right? Not only great on your scholarship application, but it's also just helping you as well. Right? Internships, right? Those help you too, because that give you a taste of, mm, this is what I really want to do. And I could tell you, I changed my major so many times because I did <laughs> internship. I'm like, this is not what I want to do. You know, I can see myself doing this, but it looks good on paper, right? It looks good on TV, watching the TV shows, but you want to actually experience it, right? To see. So if you do all of those things, it's not only just for scholarship, but it's helping you as well. But they want to see the world-rounded people. Um, there is a student on my camp, um, well, she's she's not here anymore. Um, she, she's not on my campus anymore, but um, you all heard of the Jack and Cook Scholarship, which I, I told you give the 55,000, and that's the highest scholarship for community college students. And Jack Ken Cook actually gave scholarship from high um, from elementary school to high school and to high school to four-year school. And then they realized that that's a great chunk of students that they are missing, which is the community college student. So now they have scholarship for community college students to go to four-year school. And they give $55,000. That scholarship will pay for, and that's $55,000 a year, okay? Not just one shot. Right. So if you um, those of you that are in high school right now, look for the Jack and Cook College class application is open. Go apply. I don't work for them, so I'm not advertising for them, but I, it's a great scholarship. Right. Um, and I say this because I remember, see, I work on campus and I see students and I know who's capable of, you know, because I hear their story. So there was one student that I will never forget. I, you know, I sent an application. I said, I think you'd be great for this scholarship. And she, I thought she applied and she didn't. So a week before the deadline, I'm walking in the cafeteria and I see her. And I say, hey, I didn't see your application. Did you have to say, yeah, the essay is too much. Da, 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 I can't do it. So I said, no, come over. She came. I had literally had to sit down and do the application. The essay, I said, take it to the writing center. I said, your essay is good, but I'm, I'm go to the writing center. Went to the writing center. She got her application in. And guess what? She's the only one in a two-year school, uh, in the CUNY two-year school that got this cost of $55,000. Now she's doing her PhD, right? For somebody who, you know, like, you know, this is an essay, I can write the essay. So sometimes, so you just need somebody to just push you a little bit, right? And you have to find that person. Uh, trust me, everybody have a person. Right, you just have to find a mentor. You just have to find that person. Um, it could be a teacher, it could be a guidance counselor. Talk to them, let them hear your story, and they'll be able to recommend you for things, right? Because on campus, like if I always tell um, them that if a professor know you, it's easy to go to them to get a letter of recommendation, which is part of a scholarship, right? People, um, when you're applying for scholarship, they will ask you for a letter of recommendation. 
that means that, right? Now they know who you are based on your essay, but now they want to know what other people think of you and they will ask for a professor, especially if it's an academic scholarship. So you want to find a professor to write that for you or a teacher, a high school teacher, right? And it's, it's, it's incredible to see students with 4.0 and say, I don't have anybody to write the recommendation for me. That's such a waste, right? So I'm going to show you things that you can do in your high schools, right? You don't have to know every teacher because you don't need every teacher to write a recommendation for you. But every semester, well, I'm saying semester because I'm in college, but high school is a term, right? Yeah, it's a term, right? So you will have, you know, how many teachers that you have? Pick one teacher. Pick one teacher that you can go talk to. If it's not the teacher, it could be a guardian counselor. It could be the social worker. Pick somebody that you can go to talk to. That person can be the person to write the recommendation letter for you. And in college, I always say every semester, it's your responsibility to know at least one professor that taught you something, right? They don't have to know you, but you have to make your point that they see you and they say, hey, hi, Susie, how you doing? They know you, right? You, that's your job. So when that time comes for the letters or recommendation, they will want to write that because trust me, if, if they know you, they want to share all the good things about you and that's what the recommendation is for, right? So you, want, you don't want to be pressuring that person. So they, they're going to say, um, which I have, I have read before, right? A professor wrote a recommendation for a student because they don't know that person and they wrote literally three sentences. This person is in my class. She's always on time and she's gonna do well, right? That's not, a, you want somebody that knows you, somebody that know your story. And I always say, just because you ask them to write a recommendation letter for you, that doesn't mean that's enough, right? Make an appointment with them, sit with them, tell them your story, right? I volunteer here, I go, show the, give them your resume if you have one. If you don't have one, tell them what you've done. So they can incorporate all of that stuff to make a rec, um, um, uh, recommendation for you, right? So it's, it's, it's very important that you meet with them, talk to them, tell them your story, find somebody that you feel comfortable that they know your story, right? I always say, if you ask somebody and they say, mm, I'm not sure, move on, right? Don't force that person, just move on. It's not that they, they don't wanna, write it for you, but if you pressure somebody, they might not write something spectacular, right? And you know, you are spectacular. See, you, you spend so much time doing the essay. You spend so much time getting all your essay. You don't want the recommendation to tank, right? You want a great one. So you want somebody that is proud of everything that you've done that wanna share your story. And trust me, if the person say, yes, I'll write it for you, they will write it for you, right? But I always also say, if the recommendation, if the scholarship said you need one recommendation, please ask two people, right? Ask more than you need because we are all human, right? We have good intentions and something will always happen. But if you ask for more than you need, you have a backup to the backup to the backup, right? You know, and it's for you, if it's for your own good. Um, so I guess that's what I want. Yeah, that's all I want to say about the. That definitely was I'll part of the tips for simple. scholarships. So I just wanted to make sure nobody else wanted to add anything to that before I let Michael take over with some of the stuff that he sent me. No. No? Okay. Yeah. Michael, take it away. Yeah, all you. Thanks so much. And uh, should I share? Oh, okay, it's right up there already. So um, I'll just jump through this pretty quickly. Um, again, my name is Mike Nguyen. I work with students who are interested in the Army ROTC scholarship, predominantly those who would like to do it in New York City, um, as well as students in New York City who would like to do this program. Um, if you're scratching your head for any more than three to five uh, minutes about a question you have, just feel free to text me, feel free to email me, and you can also use that QR code there. Um, so we can go ahead and jump to the next slide. Um, what did the Army do for me? three things. One, um, it gave me an experience for undergraduate and graduate education that was tuition free. Um, I did a political science bachelor's and a master's in international politics. Um, and I was very fortunate. I always wanted to be in the military. Fortunately, there was a scholarship program that helped me pay for that. And another thing to know about these scholarships is that the students who win 
sometimes the universities give the winners additional incentives. So at Fordham University in New York City, if you win 100% ROTC scholarship, Fordham has generously offered our winners free on-campus housing for several years. Um, Marist College in Poughkeepsie, New York also does that and St. John's University in Queens. So the scholarship can sometimes open other doors. Um, it also gave me opportunity to serve in a leadership position immediately after college. And most importantly, it gave me some of the best friends and the best mentors that I will ever know. And I say that assuredly, um, there's an instant connection with people who serve um, no matter how long or how short you've known each other. Um, we can go ahead. So the next slide is who is this for? If you're interested in service, you've ever thought about the military before, you're willing to think about it now, this could be for you. If you want to go to college and, and get a four-year degree, a bachelor's in science or bachelor's arts, this could be for you. Um, and if you're looking for a career, you know, if you're looking for something more than just a job, um, if we want to talk more about graduate school and how that path works, there are scholarships for medical school um, as well. Um, this might be for you. And we can jump to the next slide. And right now, if you're a high school junior, you can apply this June. It's 100% tuition and fees. There's some other money that we throw in there to help offset some other costs. Some of the requirements are up there on the screen. And again, I would tell you that if you don't meet the requirements, go ahead and start an application. Um, when I look at other students that I wanna work with, even if they haven't met the requirements, I'm still gonna try and reach out to them to see if there's any other program or benefit that we can offer. Um, what you would owe us if you win the scholarship and you decide to accept it is you got to go to college full time. We only offer that opportunity for full time uh, college students. You got to be willing to do some army training part time and you have to be interested in serving as a leader in the army after college. And our leaders typically are in charge of anywhere between 30 to 45 people. And that's a pretty awesome responsibility for a 22 year old person. Um, and what's it like? You have to work out with us. Um, so we do work out, you know, if you don't like running, you know, I'm not a huge fan of it, but you got to do it. It's, it's good for your life and it's good for fitness. Um, and that's just something to consider. Um, the next slide I'll hit really quickly is just that um, if you're a high school senior, if you're a college student or a graduate student, and you're interested in the same scholarship, um, but maybe serving part-time in the military after college, college and not full-time, we do have that opportunity available. It's called the Minuteman Scholarship. So that's something else. And again, I can always talk about these more at another time. And the next slide, we do have scholarships for students who are already in college or in graduate school. It covers, in many cases, the same amount. Um, it's the same requirements. But if you're on this call and you're already in college or you're considering during graduate school, I just want to share with you that if you're interested in the Army, there is this scholarship opportunity. I do understand that the military can sometimes be confusing because there may be many people in different colored uniforms offering things that sound different. And again, if you're thinking about any of that for more than five minutes, please feel free to reach out um, and you can scan the QR code at the bottom. And I think the next slide is the last one. What should you do next if you're interested? Let's talk, let's have a conversation to make sure that this is the right path for you. If you're interested in the service, I would encourage you to think about it, um, but I would not recommend pursuing this if you're not interested in service, because as you can see tonight, um, there are many ways to serve your country in the community as an educator, as a scholarship advisor. And there are many ways to fund your college education, um, like Stacy and Susie and Dee Dee were sharing earlier as well. Um, so if you're interested, let's talk. I'm happy to help. And Caitlin, thanks. That's all I have. Thank you so much. So now I know that I'm not sure who's been answering the questions in the Q&A, but thank you for that uh, throughout the presentation. But um, now I'll open it up for uh, questions if you have any. Can I, can I just can I just mention a couple of things before you move on? Because oh, yeah. we, we send it, you guys online, go look online, but there's also scammers out there, right? So I just want to give you a couple tips on what um, and Stacy um, said a little bit about you know don't put your social security um, kind of credit card stuff. Those are no no right. But also scholarship that's eligibility right. Not everybody can apply for the same scholarship. 
So when you're looking at the scholarship and they say, you know, there's no eligibility, you don't know, there has to be a phone number or, um, you know, a way for you to contact them, an email address, right? I always warn my student, if you don't see any way of contacting those people, don't go ahead and apply. Find somebody who can really tell you that it's a good scholarship to apply, right? Um, scholarships are free, 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 right? But you don't want it to also cost you something, right? So don't put your social security number, don't give a credit card. Even if there's an application fee, scholarships shouldn't cost, cost an application fee, right? So all those things just be wary of, you know, because nowadays there's so much scammers out there, right? So avoid those things. That's a um, little bit I want to share. No, thank you. I just, I, if there's anybody that wants to add anything else, um, I'm just, these next few slides are just resources. There are different websites. Um, and then the next one after this is just our HESC information. So. All right, so I'll add more. <laughs> <laughs> so deadlines are important, right? But don't let it stop because scholarship are annually, right? So if you miss it, you can apply for it again. Just make sure that you keep that, you know, you make sure that you're eligible and you apply, apply again. Don't let that stop you. There's a call, as we keep saying, if you will listen, there's one theme that we keep saying, there's a scholarship for everyone. There's different types of scholarship out there. If you look, you can sit in front of your good old Google and just Google scholarship and you see so much coming up, right? So don't, if, don't let that, you know, don't, think that, oh, I'm going to pay for school, you can find money somewhere, right? Even if it's $500, right? I have a student say, you know, they're only going to give me $500. So for $500, that's $2,000, right? That could pay for something. So it doesn't matter if it's, you know, the um, small amount, because that's, that's also kind of practicing, right? To get to the big one. So don't be afraid to apply. And one of the things I also want to tell, even if you apply and you don't get it, it's okay. It's okay. Don't get discouraged. It's not you, right? Because again, it's a competition. Apply again. Find somebody to like read your essay, help you, you know, figure out where you went wrong. Don't give up, right? That's, that's you know, if, if you spend some time, you research and you put in the work, you will find something. Thank you for that. Um, I see that there are two questions in here. I think that one of them is a part two to something that somebody might have already started to answer since uh, Ryan says, yes, but if I'm working in two states, is that valid? I'm not sure what the first part of that question was. I'm not sure if anybody answered that. I, I did read that the question is upon graduation for Excelsior, um, can he leave New York? Can he work in two states? Can he work in New York state and another state? and still have been eligible for Excelsior. I think that might be why it's unanswered. Um, is anybody familiar with the Excelsior um, that is here? I'm not, I don't wanna give false information right now to you, Ryan. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but I can also reach out to um, some of our financial aid ex experts and uh, email you more information about that. I do have your email from when you registered, so I can definitely send that over to you, more information about it. And then I see another question that says, do you think that third party websites like FastWeb and Bold.com are good ways to find scholarships? Uh, it's actually right here on this resource page for you. Uh, the, the FastWeb, these are different websites that um, we know are safe and the scholarships are credible um, that we have on our HESC website um, for you. And then, like I said earlier, uh, all these will be on the summary that is emailed to you as well, which will have a bunch of other websites and links for you to check out, which um, will help you find some. If, if they offer me 13,000, am I still eligible for other scholarships? Yes. And we, we didn't do a lot of talking about cost of attendance. Um, we could do that really quick. Yeah, so absolutely. The, the answer is you're eligible to accept as much aid as your cost of attendance allows. So if you are, I'll use City College, um, CUNY has a $7,000 a year tuition just about. Um, your cost of attendance has to, has to be higher than the total tuition in order for you to keep getting scholarships. So I do have a lot of students who will 
apply for lots of scholarships, and then max out on what they're eligible to receive, um, unless they're able to increase their cost of attendance, either by, sometimes it's as simple as they need to buy equipment for their classes, and that increases their cost of attendance. Sometimes it's they forget that they're moving out of their parents' homes, and they haven't changed their residency. Um, so it's really important to work closely with the financial aid office of your school so they can walk you through your cost of attendance and what your total eligibility is. And your eligibility can change every semester. It can change every year. It can change a few times throughout your duration, you know, duration of being a student. But your financial aid office is always going to have the best, most real-time information for a student. And I'm saying this to both the students, and I know there's some parents in the chat. I'm really saying this to the parents as well really important to work closely with financial aid offices. And Thank there you, might Ella. be some um, some of the scholarships that if you're not able to use it um, in that coming year, they might roll over or hold it in escrow for you for the next school year. So I think that's prudent advice that DD gave, like don't just assume that you can't use it or that you can use it, work closely with your financial aid person Absolutely. so they can maximize the use. Yeah, you know, that's really also really relevant if you're taking a private philanthropy scholarship. Um, a donor has the right to say a student can take, you know, I'm giving a $5,000 award, the student can only take $2,500 this year, and a donor can decide, all right, you can hold that for next year and see if they're eligible. So really, really important to work closely in hand, hand in hand with your scholarship um, advising team because they're gonna know those answers and if you're dealing with private dollars, so private philanthropy dollars, um, they're going to work closely with the advancement office of your school to make sure that you're eligible in ongoing years. That's a great reminder, Stacey, for students. It, but it circles back to what Susie was saying. Um, there's almost never a final no if you haven't continued to stay in touch with your financial aid office. You have to because they're always going to know the most full-time info. Awesome. Well, I don't see any more questions in our Q&A, but I just want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. And thank you to our panelists for sharing all of this insightful information. Thank you, Stacey, Dee Dee, Susie, Michael. Um, and just a reminder to everybody that you can email us at thepath at hesk.ny.gov if you have any questions uh, or concerns or anything about this presentation or if you're looking for more information. But thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you, too. Thank you for hosting us. Oh, thank thank you, you, everybody, for joining. Yes. Yeah. Bye. Okay. I see two questions in here. In, um, I, let me click on it. This, yeah. What is the best way to get financial aid back if you meet the requirements, such as GP requirement? I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure what that means. What is the best way to get? Are you asking what is the best way to get scholarship if you meet if you have a GP if you have a good GPA or if you meet the requirement? I'm not sure what that question is. Anybody can I'm not I'm not entirely sure either. Um, the only thing that I could share is that I know that um, in the instance of like one of the private schools that I've worked with, um, you know, some of their scholarships or grants are dependent upon the student continuing to maintain a certain GPA. So maybe um, the student is asking, like, if you lost it and you do come back into compliance, if you can get it, um, that is something with the Army ROTC scholarship. Um, the minimum to apply is a 2.5, um, but once you sign and activate the scholarship, you have to maintain a 2.0, both term and cumulative throughout your entire college career. So that might be, I'm just guessing what the student's asking, but they might be asking if you fall out of compliance for GPA and then you get back up there, you know, can you get those grants or scholarships back? Um, hopefully I'm, I'm close. And also, there was also another Question. I think it was some parents said, can the parents call the financial aid office to ask questions? So there's a FERPA law that we not um, we can't release the information to the parents. So the student has to call. However, if the student gives permission, there's a form that you can fill up in the school financial aid office um, that your child has given you permission to get information. 
and then that they will be able to do that. Did, did you want to add to that? Was I correct in that part? No, totally correct. Absolutely. Okay, I don't see any more questions coming in. I'm correct, right? I just want to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, again, thank you everybody so much. Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> So thank you guys for attending and coming to this event. Um, if you go to our website, we have way more events uh, throughout the weeks. And if you need more information about scholarships, just feel free to reach out. But thank you guys so much for joining us. And thank you to our panelists. Again, I appreciate it so much.